Hello everyone. Let us learn today typical cervical vertebrae. Now we know the cervical vertebrae are seven in number, and out of it, the first, second, and seventh, they are having some special features. But C3 to C6, the third, fourth, fifth, and sixth, they are sharing common features, and so as they are the typical cervical vertebrae, right? Now in this typical cervical vertebrae, if we talk about first the body. Which is small, transversely oval, and this upper surface presents raised lips or uncle processes at the sides. You can see over here the uncle processes on either side, right? And the lower surface is the counterpart. Okay, here you can see the beveled margins, which will accommodate the uncle processes of the corresponding lower vertebrae, right? The bodies of the adjacent vertebrae, they are connected by secondary cartilaginous joint, uh, and the intervertebral disc with the nucleus pulposus in the middle, and the annulus fibrosus at the periphery. Right. So between the vertebral bodies, there lies the fibrous intervertebral disc. Right. A pair of synovial uncovertebral joints. Right. Uncovertebral joints, so they are also named as joints of Lushka. They are present on each side of the disc over here, right? Between the uncle processes and the corresponding beveled margins on the lateral side of the lower surface, right? The anterior and posterior surfaces, anterior surface and the posterior surfaces of the body, they are connected with each other by anterior. And posterior longitudinal ligaments, respectively. The vertebral foramen, you can see over here, is large and triangular, and that will accommodate the cervical enlargement of the spinal cord. Right. Now, each pedicle over here, you can see this portion is pedicle. Right. Now, this pedicle arises from the posterolateral aspect of the body, midway between the upper and lower margins. Okay, you can see over here. It is attached to the mid portion of the lateral aspect, posterolateral aspect of the body, right? And it is diverging, and it is directed backwards, right? This portion. Therefore, the superior and inferior vertebral notches are equally formed. The superior vertebral Notch transmits numerically corresponding cervical now. Let me show you. Now, imagine this is second, this is third, and if you articulate like this, right? So, if you talk about the superior intervertebral notch, right? Superior notch over here of the C3. So, here comes the numerically corresponding spinal now okay so here from this intervertebral foramen the third cervical spinal now emerges out okay regarding laminas which are thin bony plates and they are directed backward and medially you can see over here and they reach to the spine they are connected with the lamina of the adjacent vertebrae, right above and below, by series of fibroelastic ligamentum flava, and that will fill the gap between the laminas, right? The spinous process is short, bifid, and somewhat directed downward, okay? And it gives attachment to ligamentum muci. And number of extensor muscles of back of the neck, but the main attachment is ligamentum nuchae. The superior and inferior articular processes you can see over here. This is superior articular process with the articular facet. This is corresponding inferior articular process with the articular facet, right? And the superior articular facet is flat and faces. Backward and upward, right? Whereas the inferior facet is directed reciprocally forward and downward, 
right and they articulate with each other to form plain synovial joint and which permits flexion extension and limited degree of rotation right between these joints the transverse processes are directed laterally and somewhat forward each process is pierced by foramen transverse orium you can see over here and that is a characteristic feature of any cervical vertebrae so with that foramen transverse orium found within the transverse process you can identify the vertebrae as a cervical vertebrae right now each transverse process on either side of the foramen transverse orium has got an anterior root you can see over here in front of the foramen transverse orium then there is an anterior tubercle there is a posterior root there is a posterior tubercle okay and in between these two tubercle there runs a costo transverse bar okay now the anterior root the anterior tubercle the costo transverse bar which is bridging the gap between the two tubercle and the posterior tubercle these four things again i'm repeating the anterior root the anterior tubercle the costo transverse bar and the posterior tubercle represent the costal elements okay of the cervical vertebrae right and the posterior root only it represents the true transverse element which is attached at the junction of lamina behind and pedicle in front okay now the anterior tubercle okay specifically the anterior tubercle of the sixth cervical vertebrae it is very prominent and it is called as carotid tubercle because the common carotid artery can be compressed against it by giving deep pressure the anterior tubercle give attachment to three sides of the muscles the longus coli the longus capitis and scalenus anterior whereas the posterior tubercle provides attachment to again number of muscles but specifically to scalenus medius scalenus posterior and levator scapulae right three main muscles there are other muscles but you need to remember these three only right the foramen transverse orium of typical cervical vertebrae right it transmits second part of the vertebral artery you know vertebral artery has got four parts out of it the second part it runs through the foramen transverse oria of c1 to c6 right and this vertebral artery is surrounded by the plexus of sympathetic nerve and there are vertebral veins which pass through foramen transverse oria of c1 to c7 vertebrae right the grooved upper surface of costo transverse bar over here you can see from the side the costo transverse bar has got a groove right it lodges ventral rami of the corresponding cervical nerve so if it is third cervical vertebrae then here the ventral rami of the third cervical nerve right spinal nerve will lodge right so this is regarding the bony features and attachments of the typical cervical vertebrae hope you have understood well thanks for watching